What's up, crew? Last month, we spent $460,000 on paid advertising. A lot of different ways you can grow your business, but I got to tell you, one of the most controllable ways to do it is learning and mastering the art of paid advertising. It's how we grew our business from zero to 60 in warp speed. And a lot of people are telling you that they can teach you how to do paid ads, but we actually do it month in and month out. And we've put together this fantastic product. And our lead media buyer goes into detail about how we place media, how we write advertising, what images we use, how we do targeting. It's extraordinary. And it's very, very, very affordable. If you want to grow your business faster, go to trafficandfunnels.com slash workshop. One word, trafficandfunnels.com slash workshop. Let us teach you how we do it. And you'll get some good lessons to implement in your business as well. Check it out. You're listening to the Traffic and Funnel Show, the best show on the planet for client businesses to learn about traffic, funnels, sales, and conversions. Chris and Taylor are the founders of Traffic and Funnels, a digital marketing consultancy helping you get paid clients from cold traffic daily. Now, here are your hosts, Chris and Taylor. What's up, crew? Welcome to the Traffic and Funnel Show. Today is going to be an awesome show because we haven't recorded in three weeks, and so we have a lot, a, a lot of pent up wisdom we're trying to get out. I'm ready to rock and roll. July was it, July was kind of hard, man. It was an intense, hard. intense month. A lot going on. I traveled a lot. You traveled, and. Uh, it's crazy though to be out and, and our revenue st- still like growing and money still coming into the business. Dude, it's the dream. Like we've talked about this for years and years and years. In fact, we were just, I was talking to uh, uh, Brian and Sebastian last night. They were talking about how they're setting some stuff up in their business to kind of back out a little bit more, do more strategy. Dude, this is the goal if you are an entrepreneur is to get to a place where you can work on the top 1% of things that you enjoy you're good at, you were born to do, and you've got a great team. This is why I hate solopreneurs. Sorry, if you're a solopreneur, you know, listen to this. I don't hate you as a person. I just hate you as the idea of who you are as a person. <laughs> Anyways. There it is. Uh, there it is, y'all. Here, here's the title of to that, the title of today's talk is Solopreneurship Sucks. At the end of the day, Chris, you said something at the event. You said it's all about people, people. Here's the thing. There was a time in our business when everything we did was about us. And if you are in a place where you've been in that season for a long time, that's not a sign of like, well, I just know what I want. It's a sign of dysfunction. Mm. You're dysfunctional. All you do is centered around you. Me and Chris have really learned a lot in the last year and a half. And at the end of the day, I am not, com- I'm not happy anymore. Just getting to the top of the mountain. I want to take people with me to the top of the mountain. I would go so far as to say that if you are at the top of the mountain by yourself, you have failed. You have actually let down your duty to the world around you. And so I figured, you know, we've made a lot of mistakes in team, a lot of mistakes in culture. We pulled all of our client base over 350 people right now. And the response was adamantly like, help us with culture, help us with hiring, help us with team, because it's difficult. It's costly if you do it the wrong way. So I thought we would just talk a little bit about culture, team, how we're doing it and anything else you guys want to know in the process. Lexi says, tell us how you really feel. Oh, you know, I always will. It's my commitment. Yeah, I just want to throw a plug in for the newsletter for August. Um, if you guys aren't subscribed, get subscribed. Go to trafficandfunnels.com slash insiders access. And it's an opportunity for you to kind of just have an inside look into our business, our learning lessons, our discoveries, our failures, our wins across the board. And so why I'm saying that right now is because this is kind of on the topic of what we're discussing today. And for me, I'm at a place where, you know, I, I'm not interested in just having a job, but right? I want to do what I love to do. And I want to leave a legacy for my family as well as for other people. And that requires great people working with me. Right. And I, we're at a place right now. I mean, you're, you are definitely my best hire ever, bro. And I mean, it's just paid wow. dividends over and over again. No, but seriously, like, we have amazing people on our team and it has cost us a lot, not just financially, man, but emotions and time and just all the investment person we put into getting to this place where right. we can go out of time, go out of town and just our time be our own and the business continues to move forward and grow. 
And so the vision I want to cast, like we didn't start out trafficking funnels with this in mind. Like our initial thing was like, dude, can we do 20 grand a month? And that was like, that was like the scope initially of our vision. And just like it's grown and grown. And now we've come into a place of discovery of what is possible if you align the right things. And a big piece of that is having people. So again, I implore you to go get the newsletter. It's a two-part series, uh, August, and then September is going to be a lot more practical on implementing this stuff. If you want to get a place to where not only are you secure as a business and a business owner, um, but you are just thriving and dominating for years to come, this is going to be very foundational wisdom and then also practical wisdom for you to be able to implement. So another thing to add to that is it's not just about you being able to go out of town and not have to think about anything. Think about the opportunity that you are creating for other people when you bring them on your team. Yeah. You know, like you, if you're really an entrepreneur, if you're truly an entrepreneur, you actually have a vision to increase the opportunity for people around you. Like if you are a, just a solopreneur who runs a lifestyle blog, you're not an entrepreneur because you're not actually providing any opportunities to people around you. That's the, the textbook of an entrepreneur is like, you're an opportunity bringer. You're a creator of opportunities. And so how do we do that? We can talk about some keys to scaling with a great team. Um, TF is doing, we're, we're doing more revenue every single month. Uh, large part of that is because of our team. So you want to hop into this first key? Yeah, I was just going to add to that on the what an entrepreneur is. Just one more thing. Is there a risk taker? Risk taker. Ooh, you're getting dirty now, bro. Like if you think you're an entrepreneur, but you're not willing to invest thousands of dollars, then you're probably not an entrepreneur. So, hey, here's the good news. Papa John's offers benefits now. Really? And if you don't want to take risks, then you can always deliver pizzas and get benefits and they pay weekly. That's a big perk, man. Hey, Traffic and Funnels offers benefits now. That's true. And you can work for us. Hey, I'm just going to throw in another plug here. Uh -oh. If you what you do, I might want you on this team. We'll pay you more than Papa John's. Maybe. All right. Number one. All right. Know where you want to go. This is really, this is really crucial um, because you are the leader right? You are the CEO. If, if you're the one who's building the business, you started the business. So you are the visionary and you need to know where you want to be in six months. So you can start doing the right things today. And that comes in like with marketing sales and all that stuff is for the building of where you want to be. So not only is it the money that you want to make, but it's, it's what you want to be doing. Like your perfect day. What does that look like? Especially if you're starting out, like when we started out traffic and funnels, we did everything. We did, we wrote yep. all the copy, we ran all the marketing, all the ads, all the sales, all the clients, like literally, yep. of course, the first thing we had to take care of to get to a place of, of some stability was our cash coming into the house and the house, I mean the business, right? So we focused on marketing and sales that got the majority of our time. And so that we have that cash reserve because once we kind of got into it and we have that first six figure month, January three years ago, right? Then it's like our belief system was so high. Our confidence was so high that, man, this is something that I think we could actually, we could make it work. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's an interesting point is just like knowing your destination. I get so annoyed um, because I feel like we have nice things. Like you are, uh, you were supposed to close on your lake house this week. I don't Just know if you were on what happens tomorrow. They got pushed back a little bit, but you have a great, you have a great, beautiful home in Charlotte and I feel like we have nice things, but this is why I get so annoyed at the people who are constantly like flashing and it's just like their business brings in money and they're, they immediately put that money into other things. It prevent, it takes your optionality away. You see them online and it's like, they they'll have a good month. And then it's like, you got two McLarens and a couple of Rolexes. And it's just like, you know, you are, you are monopolizing the opportunity in your business for yourself rather mm -hmm. than, distributing it, distributing it out to other people. And yes. we've really gone hard against that. It was like, we want to, every single month that we have this gross month, it's bigger than the month before. We want to create new opportunities for new people to join our team, new people to take up the opportunity that we've put out 
that doesn't mean that we can't have nice things, but knowing where you want to go is very important because you have to prepare for where you want to go Yep. in the instances of cash balances and, you know, things like that kind of hit my, hit my mind there. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like we talked about this at the elite, uh, elite events back in April, it's inverted thinking, right? If, if yes. start with the end in mind, then you know how to put in the proper building blocks, what the proper milestones and steps are to get you actually to the end. And do we, t- we deal with so many people. We work with so many amazing clients, customers in the thousands now, right? In the thousands that are coming into the business and this is one of the big pieces that they're missing is they're so in the weeds. They don't take the time to zoom out and actually know, okay, what do I want as a business? Like, why yeah. am I doing this in the first place? Um, so this is, this is crucial, my friends. Crucial. Number two, guard proper expectations. I'm going to give you three types of expectations that will ruin a company culture. And how do we know this, Chris? Because we've had wrong expectations. <laughs> We've done it wrong. We've also hired, you know, Jay's been a tremendous help. We've had people come into our organization and train us and teach us, but this is important for you to know. There's three types of expectations that you want to stay away from if you want a healthy culture. Number one, number one, three types of bad expectations. Number one, unclear expectations, unclear expectations, unclear expectations create burnout. This is when somebody comes into the team and, um, you sort of don't know what you want them to do and it's not really clear to them what they're supposed to do. And so they end up just kind of defaulting to whatever's in front of them. And this really creates burnout, not because of overall, but because they have no vision for their role. Yep. We've both been guilty of, of allowing this to take place in our teams. Number two, uncommunicated expectations, uncommunicated expectations. How many of you ever heard the phrase fear culture? Fear culture comes from an organization that has expectations that are in the founder's head, but they're not communicated to the team. Yep. This means that somebody comes in, they, they're expected to do things, but they were never told to do things. And so they end up getting in trouble for things that they were never told to do. You can see how it gets. And for those of you who are being like, well, this seems pretty obvious. That doesn't seem like that would happen. It happens all the time, all the time, more than you even know. With that, like we have uh, uh, typically as leaders in the builders, we underestimate how many things a person can do. Yes. Right. Typically your your team is not going to move as fast as you. They don't have the whole scope, the whole vision. They don't see all the pieces, especially when you have multiple people on your team. Um, And so this is, this is also, I kind of want to add this as another learning lesson on the proper expectations where we've seen very, high productivity from our team and it, as it relates to this is really dialing them in and having them focus on one primary objective. Right? Like no matter what happens, like they carry that objective to the finish line. And that's where we're seeing big wins versus we would say, Oh, Hey Bob, you are you know responsible for these 15 things. Right. Yeah. We're just like, our expectation is that they can do that. And that's just silly. Right. Yeah. hundred thousand percent, bro. This is the third thing. If you got salespeople or marketing people or whatever, you know, if you have a producer role, this is something that's really been important for us is misaligned expectations, misaligned expectations. This is kind of going into the weeds. So we'll pick it back up to surface level here in a minute. But anytime you have someone on your team and they're expected to do something that, that, that is not aligned underneath what they're paid to do, you're going to have a mismatch of expectations. They're not properly aligned or incentivized. I was reading um, this is a book called Hippo Manic, something about basically entrepreneurs and how people who are in a, especially in America, are a little bit crazy. You have to be a little bit crazy to be an entrepreneur. And uh, it referenced something that I also read. I don't know if you guys read a lot of books, but you notice when you start reading a lot that there's a lot of things that tie true wisdom, classic, timeless wisdom there's pieces of it in a lot of the books that are being written even today. And this book called why nations fail talked about incentivization and how the reason that America is so prosperous and the reason that Australia is doing so well. And the reason that uh, people in England are doing well and they get all the politics out of it. You just take that elsewhere. But from an economic socioeconomic standpoint, the reason great countries are great comes down to personal incentivization, which comes from, 
a capitalistic economy. And he was talking about how South America is not capitalistic. Africa is not capitalistic. There's no racial reason for somebody being prosperous or unprosperous. Not anymore in America, not anymore in the UK. And what it really comes down to is are people incentivized personally for the behavior that the government wants to see? It's a long way around this mountain to say that inside your organization, the most powerful way that you can actually construct expectations is through aligning them with their incentivization. Salespeople are paid to do what? Sell. Sell. Why aren't salespeople uh, paid to do admin work? Because admin work doesn't make the company money. Marketing people are paid to do what? Market. Market. Operations people are paid to run what? Ops. It's the same thing in every position. And I think a lot of people, when they don't understand, is that you know they may cap somebody's pay, they may set somebody's bonuses based on something that they don't actually want that person to do. You've got misaligned expectations. Anyways, no comments on this. So I guess that everybody is just uh, enthralled by the history lesson. You want to go to number three? Yeah. Pick your price. Pick your price. If you want to grow, if you want to build, you're going to pay the price one way or the other. The great thing is you have the option to pick the price that you pay. So it's either you learn via bad experiences, making those huge mistakes, or you learn from someone else who's done it. So the elite event that we just had in Nashville, 70 plus clients there, um, hours of myself and Taylor walking our clients through this. This is something that we go into in the newsletter again, traffickingfunnels.com slash insiders access, all one word. Um, you know, it was just laying out all the mistakes that we've made and in just detail. And these, these clients are doing a lot of money in revenue and they're not asking about like, oh, what's the best ad strategy? You know, all this kind of stuff. They're asking about team. They're asking about building you know, these long-term legacy things because they understand the value of learning from myself and Taylor the mistakes that we've made, our learning lessons so that they don't have to pay that price, right? Um, and the price that they're choosing to pay is much less than the experiential price that you have to pay, right? Because not only, well, do, dude, you have, not only do you have to pay financially, right? But all the emotional things that you have to pay, um, the time, like it just, the compound is insane. Yeah. What were you it's saying? funny. It's funny how there are people online today, very prominent people that are talking about guys like Ray Dalio, Charlie Munger, icon, business moguls and leaders. And they're using these people as examples of how to behave. And uh, they're talking about order of consequences and Charlie Munger's thing. Learn, he said, I would rather learn vicariously through other people's mistakes than to make them on my own. And Charlie Munger has $40 billion in cash right now sitting in a bank account. These are men and women that we should all be wanting to learn from. But it's interesting to me that people are teaching and using them as an example, but they don't have any mentors of their own. Mm. It's like, there's never been a greater double standard to that. And you know, that's why we're so anti against like teaching things that you do not do and doing things that you do not teach. It kind of creates a, an ethical com like complex within the industry. And we want to be really wise in that. Like there's never been a season that we haven't had a mentor. Yeah. There's never been a season where we haven't been in some sort of masterminds. There's never been a season where we've been preaching one thing, but not doing it in the dark corners of the room. Um, you know what I mean? Like yep. it doesn't make any sense. And I think that that's why you see the growth and the prospering that you see is because we are actually participating in the prescription that we're giving to other people. So I just want right. to throw that out there because these guys, man, like Charlie Munger, he's studying the mistakes of other people up and down and they retain advisors and consultants who t- talk to them about the market. And it's just like, it's silly to me when it's like, why would you, think that you can create a six figure asset or a seven figure asset or an eight figure asset, but you don't have anyone to bounce your ideas off of. It's just silly. You're, you're picking your price that you're going to pay one way or the other, but one price is more expensive than the other. And that's the price of experience. Yeah, absolutely. I just want to give a note and maybe some coaching tips on mentorship. If that's okay. It's totally okay, bro. You can do whatever you want. I think that people have this notion that mentors are supposed to be their saviors. 
Mm. That absolutely is not the case. They are supposed to guide you based on where you want to go. And common mistake that I've seen is people don't know where they want to go. Right. And they don't know how they need to leverage that mentor to, because the mentor, their experience is vast. You know, you take, take the wonderful Jay Abraham dude. I mean, he's done much everything, right? He is just like this massive shed of tools, but we have to know what we want to build in order to be able to leverage and use those tools properly that he has. Right. I know for us specifically with Jay, that was a big learning lesson, right? Yeah. Big discovery for us. And so this kind of ties in and goes back to the number one thing. Like if you don't know where you want to go, what you want out of your business and your life, then you won't know the proper pieces to put together, right? Even if you come to client kid, if you don't know where you want to go, then how do you know what to leverage and you don't, how to utilize us as mentors and coaches, right? You, you don't Bro, did know. You, did you see my post on Facebook from this morning? No. Let me read it to you real fast. Cause it's exactly yeah. what you're saying right now. You ready for this? I'm ready. Here it is. I've been in one mastermind for two and a half years and I've had the same personal mentor coming up on almost three. When I see people hopping from one group to the next, constantly outgrowing everyone and everything, I see it as a sign of immaturity, not of growth. It really is a sign of dysfunction in one of two areas that you will eventually have to fix. Number one, selection. Number two, extraction. This is what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Some people are great at extracting value, but they're easily swayed by fads and fancy marketing. They have shiny object, teach me something syndrome, and they're always getting stuck in poor environments because their selection is off. And some are really good at selection. They have strong intuition but they need to be handheld and forced to bed and they cannot extract value properly from the environments that they're in. So it's a skill set to master both abilities to select wisely and then to harbor a discipline and focus to fully extract the values and the lessons from your choices. Rapidly cycling through everyone you can find in an industry is indicative that your business's foundation is likely poorly thought out, poorly executed and built on shiny object stilts. Mm. Hey, Michael says, I found it challenging to find a mentor to help me define the destination. Am I wrong in wanting help to define what I want? What are your thoughts on that? I don't think anybody can tell you what you want. Like you can, you got to have that personal vision. A mentor really can help you decide what the pathway to get there is, but we've never really, nobody's been able to figure that out for us, except for us. So I've got, I've got some, like maybe some insight from Michael and just my hunch, my gut is, and this probably goes for a lot of people watching this, is you are having a hard time defining it because you don't believe what you're wanting to define. So what I mean by that is if you want to define $100,000 and you don't believe that you can actually hit 100000 in revenue in a month, then you just keep it like this kind of broad, you know, maybe one day I can get. And so you need a mentor you feel to really say, no, you absolutely can do that. And this is, you should, you should do it. You should go for it. Right. And I think this is what happens with a lot of people is their belief system is not aligned with what they want. And they haven't done, they haven't taken the steps to at least build that momentum of belief to know like the clear path, of getting to whatever it is they want. So Mike, I'd, I'd be interested to hear your feedback on that. Um, if that kind of hits any buttons for you, let me know. It's good, bro. That might be true, bro. Just might be onto something. I'm pretty certain I am. My belief level has me at a hundred percent certainty. I like that dude. Anything else you want to say before we wrap up? It's been a good run, man. So our, uh, our video guy just went on his honeymoon and he just got married. And uh, when he gets back, we're going to start this back up every Tuesday at 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. It'll be live. But we're going to have a call-in number as well so people can call in and chat with us and be able to talk about business problems. Uh, and that's pretty much all she wrote. So, let's wrap up, dude. Problems. 
<laughs> hey, also, if you feel like you might be a great fit for our team, you love what we're doing in Traffic and Funnels, shoot us a message, support at trafficandfunnels.com. Yeah. Yeah. We are taking people in, especially marketing and especially sales. All right. See you guys. Peace. Hey, what if you could be in the boardroom where we sit down and we plan out how we're going to grow our eight figure company month in and month out. If you've ever wondered how traffic and funnels grew so quickly, there are strategies, there are formulas that you can model in your business that our clients are modeling to scale to the moon and back. This is an amazing program. It's called Insiders Access Monthly. And we've put together a couple words on a page that you can actually go and check out this offer, trafficandfunnels.com slash IAM. You will not be sorry, I promise you. Let me know what you think.